Dan, it's really exciting to have you here with us. Um, you know, I'm, I've got your book, Flash Foresight, your best Wall Street Journal best-selling author, one of the leading futurists in the world, top business consultant to some of the largest corporations around. And we've had the pleasure of kind of getting to know you and start working with you for helping CPAs in the finance accounting profession. So welcome. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, big thing we've been talking about is this idea of CPAs trying to keep up with change. So tell us a little bit about just kind of how you're thinking about it and, and about your experience in terms of what we're doing together and how we're working on this. Well, you know, keeping up is difficult because everything is going so fast. And <clears throat> one of the things that uh, we teach in uh, being anticipatory is to skip keeping up. Uh, frankly, keeping up is a fool's game. Why? Well, you can never really keep up. There's so much happening so fast. And secondly, what's the advantage of keeping up? I have yet to hear an advantage to keeping up. So what I want them to do is something that is counterintuitive, jump ahead with low risk. You see, we are very risk averse. We don't like risk. Uh, and we're, you know, we look at those numbers. <laughs> and <clears throat> what I want you to do is to realize there is a way to jump ahead with low risk. There is a way to actually see what's happening, not everything that's happening, but enough of what's happening before it happens to get huge advantage. One of the reasons I'm so excited about bringing this to this profession is that uh, we, our, our work is past oriented. Yeah. Uh, and there are things that we don't want to change. You know, we don't want to change our focus on accuracy. Right. Hey, we're never going to change that. Right. Uh, on our uh, ethics and all of those, you know, we're not going to change our values at all. And uh, so there are things that we are not changing. But on the other hand, your customers, your clients, whether they're internal or external, are not only changing, they're transforming. So are you changing as fast as your clients are changing? Right. Are you learning as fast as your clients are learning? Standing still means you're becoming less relevant every year in a world of transformational change. This is about how can you increase your relevance in a world of transformational change. Yep. And one other little element here that I think is so counterintuitive here is that we're all really busy, super busy. Yeah. But you can indeed busy yourself right out of business in this case. So am I too busy to do what it takes to remain relevant to my clients? Am I too busy for that? Yeah. And right now, I'd like you to really think about that. Because if you're too busy to act right now, you're becoming less relevant all the time. Right. Right. And, we, and, and it's funny because our CPAs tend to say that they want to do this, right? So this idea that I want to stop being reactive, I want to try to be proactive, or I don't have enough time. You know, they, they feel the pressure to add value, but they don't know where to start. Like, where, where would you advise? Where should they start? You hit the word right there. When, listen to what people say, and you can hear when or if they will do it. I want to quit smoking. You're not there. <laughs> right? I want to do this, and it ain't happening. Uh, I'm uh, working on it. I'm trying to quit smoking. I'm trying to do this, and it ain't happening. I'm doing it. It's happening. And in, in the smoker so analogy, have... when someone says, I quit smoking, that's different than I'm working at quitting smoking, yep. which means it isn't happening. So we've got to shift people from a uh, could do past the should do to a must do. Yeah. And right now, this is different than in the past, past being two years ago, three years ago, five years ago, or 40 years ago, because you didn't need to do this then. The world was not transforming at the rate that it is changing and yeah. transforming. So you could get away with not making any changes. Yep. You know, there's an old saying, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always had. But because of the times changing so rapidly now, if you do what you've always done, you'll get less of what you've always had. Yeah. And, and Tom, one more little element I want to throw out here, and that is that uh, a lot of us, not, any, not all of us, because we have CFOs and others here, but many of us, we bill for time and material. Yep. And but technology side. is allowing us to do so much more in so much less time yep. that you're going to be making less every year if you keep doing the same thing. You're hitting so, that big one around the nail of the head. That's right? a that's huge. And, and so already the hand live writing's on the wall. You're not going to be a happy camper unless you make the could do to a must do, the want to do to a have to do, and realize that now is the time. And here's the most important thing. You can do it. You see, I don't want any of you to be a technologist. You don't have to know the physics of a telephone in order to use it. Right. Um, 
the, the key here is to become aware of those tools. So even in a small practice, just like in any small business, there are things that were impossible to do two, three, four years ago that I can do now that I would have formerly had to have been a major corporation to afford. Yeah. I mean, I can launch 100 servers today while we're talking and only pay <laughs> for the nanosecond of use. Yeah. And that was impossible just a few years ago. Yeah. So not to mention, by the way, two or three years from now. So Dan, it's funny, there's two things that we've seen that really prompted us to, to kind of seek you out and, and talk about this. One is this idea that CPAs are constantly saying, I need to deal with this fast changing world and I don't know how to see farther, right? I, there's an old adage that says, the faster you go, the farther ahead you have to see. So they have to stop looking in the rearview mirror and start looking in the front view. So that's what we're seeing all the time, which led us down this path. And then the second piece has to do with the idea that um, they're, they're so busy and the notion of how do I save time to make time. And I think we've talked about that today, but those two pieces combined with all the research, right? The idea that small businesses want CPAs to be proactive. The future ready study from the AICPA that said CPAs are not future ready. Well, what's that mean? They have to be able to look at the future and identify these trends before they happen, right? So that's the stuff that I think is so powerful that you're bringing to us that, that our profession needs because they want to do this. And what we have to do is move them into the must do or have to do. So. Exactly. You know, it's, it's kind of like in order to speed up, are you willing to slow down and be strategic? Because we can be going really fast in the wrong direction, I as see. so many companies and so many people have. Yeah. And, you know, once again, there's a reason the windshield is larger than the rearview mirror. Yeah. And uh, so we want to make sure we've got our bright lights on. Right. So it's funny because we're starting to see there are some entrepreneurial younger CPAs, not just younger, but in many cases, uh, that are starting to do this. They're adopting this technology and they're doing new services that no one ever dreamed of before because they can, right? Because they've got the same stuff that large companies used to have. Exactly. So it, what advice, what, like what can you, so how do we help move the CPA from that want to to must do? Like any, what's your advice from that standpoint? Well, uh, you mentioned the uh, younger people in many cases. First of all, a couple things on, uh, on being young. I know old people that are young and young people that are old. It's true. It's not about gray hair, it's about mindset. That's right. Okay, so Good let's point. get that point. Because I know young people that are, you know, they're uh, almost arthritic in their minds, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but yet I know old people that, that are very young. Yep. All right, so it's not about that. Uh, really, it's about the box. You know, we, you've heard of that get out of the box yep. thinking. Well, we spent our entire career building the box. We constructed the box. We, we're the guys that built the box. Right, that's right. <laughs> so it's hard to get out of something that we created, right? That's and, a good point. And that's why it's good to get the perspective of somebody from the outside, including some younger people that are coming in. Now, you and I both know over the next uh, four or five years, we've got close to 75% of the people in this profession leaving, retiring. Right. And I, that means a lot of young people coming in. So there, number one, has to be a lot of mentoring taking place right now. Yeah. There should be. There should be a lot of knowledge transfer taking place right now because, you know, you take your knowledge and your wisdom and your expertise with you when you leave. Correct. Unless you find a way to have it stay. Yep. And by the way, in the anticipatory organization, we talk about exactly how to do that. And one other element that we do in the program is we show you how to end the war between the young and the old. Now, let me just address That's a big one. We're, I mean, I mean that's a that huge a one we're seeing. Well, it, it's in every industry, and it is not a outward spoken war. Right. But it's, it's huge quiet. because it's quiet. Well, here's what I mean by that. If you're young, you're looking at the older people in the organization, even a small organization, and you're thinking to yourself, hey, they don't get it. You know, they're like a fossil. Uh, and, you know, you're right. Uh, and if you're older, you're looking at the young people saying, oh, the world's going downhill, man. They, they don't get it. And by the way, hey, you're right, unless we end the war and realize we have a perfect fit. We need each other. If you're older, you have knowledge, you have experience, you have solved many problems, you've worked with such a wide variety of clients, uh, you have something the young don't have. You can't take a PhD class on wisdom and experience and walk away with anything. That's your goal if you're older. But you also, because that means you also have a very well fortified box that you've built, uh, you, it's hard to get out of it. Right. And, the, and the young people, they don't have all of that baggage. 
which is good and bad right. in a world of transformational change, but they also have a knowledge of technology that's very different than us. So when we actually learned to end that war, which we spend some good time with in this uh, training program, we can end up uh, working together in new and powerful ways and turn negatives into positives. That's, I mean, that's exciting. And, and it's, uh, we, you know, we're hearing this, we've been doing a lot of work in this whole generational notion. And uh, I think you're exactly right. I think even the idea of reverse mentoring, right? Where you have the young people mentoring Absolutely. the older people on the technology side and let the older people mentor them on the wisdom and knowledge side, right? I mean, that's the natural way to bring a lot of that stuff together. Yeah, exactly. And again, I don't need to know what they know. They already know it. Right. Uh, you know, you don't need to become the technologist, right. but you do need to become aware. For example, in this profession, the cloud, huge, giant. The cloud's not going away. Right. By the way, that's a certainty. Yes. Uh, in a world of uncertainty, <laughs> right? Uh, mobility, mobility. Uh, let me just ask you, mobility probably has um, that trend, that hard trend is come on faster and bigger and more profound in everything yeah. than any other tech-driven trend ever. So let me ask you, did mobility happen to you? And most people would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. and hey, it's another thing we have to deal with, another hassle we have to deal with. By the way, if you're a Walmart or a Kmart or a retailer, you're saying, oh, geez, mobility, here we are again, you know, showrooming and everything else. Instead of realizing what opportunity we've just been given. Yeah. The good old days of retail are ahead of us, right. if you're a retailer. By the way, the good old days of this profession are ahead of us, not behind us, unless we sit still and do nothing right now. Yeah, good point. Good point. Hey, listen to that one. This is, this is opportunity. Yeah. We have to flip that thinking, though. You're right, because the immediate reaction we see when we do any of this work with our CPAs is the, the idea that trends are almost always looked at as negative. And we have to start being able to, like you said, the, you know, your techniques to start identifying those and flip that to say, where's the opportunity in that? Or how do I skip that? Or some of those other techniques that you talk about. Sure. I mean, look at the uh, recent surveys you've done of uh, the profession where, you know, 76 uh, percent uh, have small business owners and medium sized business owners leaving because you're, uh, you know, not uh, you're reactive, not proactive. Right. And uh, you have other things that have said similar. Yep. Um, and then it was another one that I think it was 56 percent uh, of uh, 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 CFOs and, and others in the field felt they weren't future ready. Right. Uh, well, you know, that's, that's not good, but we can be. You see, here's the thing. You can be future ready. Yeah. More than future ready, you can be future competent. Because, again, this is a competency. I mean, let me address that competency just a minute. We're good at reacting, we're good at responding, we're good at crisis management. We spend a lot of time, and by the way, that's why we're so busy. <laughs> All right. Uh, we've decided to get uh, get agile. Agility is really important. Uh, Hewlett Packard uh, recently uh, last year broke in half. And the reason they decided to divide into two, the CEO said, quote, unquote, so we could be more agile. By the way, that won't help. And the reason <laughs> it won't help is because agility is related to reacting and responding. Ah. You're just more agile at it. See, it's dealing with change coming from the outside in, which is still crisis management putting out fires. This is also about creating change from the inside out, both you personally as well as your profession, yep. shaping the future of your business, shaping the future of this profession actively rather than having the forces of change shape it for, for us, you. by the way, and you are not going to like that future. Yep. But you can like one that you have some input in that you can shape and you can mold. Yeah. So you can't shape the past, but you can shape the future based on the actions you take today. Makes sense. And, and it's funny because in, in our profession, <laughs> with our national organization, and we've played a major role in this, we've actually done visioning work for CPAs to say, what, is, what do you want the future to be? So the interesting thing is we have a place to start where they say, I want to be adding value, like the whole idea of adding insight with integrity, those kind of core pieces of who CPAs are, making sense of a changing and complex world. So your, you know, this, this program we're working on with you helps them now apply good discipline to, like you said, future competency, the, the missing competency of anticipation and being future ready, all those things is, is learnable is what you're saying. Yeah, see the key is we, we kind of know what to do. What, what I'm doing is saying, so here's how to do it. Yep. So we're giving the how to, yeah. instead of the, yeah, I want to be more creative, I want to be more innovative. Yeah, well, if you don't know how, what good is it? Uh, I want to do visioning, but how do I know if my vision is good? How do I know I can even make this happen? Yeah. 
so this is the, well, here's how to do it. And by the way, it's got a 32 year track record of working. Yeah. So uh, one of the things, Tom, that I'm so excited about with the uh, anticipatory organization uh, uh, finance and accounting edition that we put together, obviously it's customized with your help yep. for this profession. It's not generic, yeah. uh, which I think is a really great because we wanted through your co-creation group, uh, made sure that it was focused yep. for this profession, yeah. uh, not for you know, doctors or dentists. Um, and they can use it too, but they need something focused for them. Right which by the way, we're, we'll do as well, because why not customize what you're doing instead of just generalize? Correct. That's by the way, that's part of the future. Right, that's uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> so why not do it? <laughs> so uh, getting back to the competencies, reacting, responding, putting out fires, agility, uh, and by the way, manufacturers are lean. They know how to do what's called Six Sigma, yep. almost zero defects. Um, and a lot of people think it's all about execution. Uh, a number of years ago, all the books on execution were doing great because if you're executing well, you got it made. Uh, and by the way, BlackBerry was executing well. Um, as a matter of fact, Sony, Dell, Microsoft, all of these companies that have been having trouble, HP, um, they are good at all those competencies. What they were missing is the ability to anticipate. And so what are we trying to help them anticipate? Disruptions before they disrupt. They're there to see. You just didn't have a how do we see them. All right, here's how you see them, with a track record that's been right. Yep. Um, <clears throat> uh, predicting accurately problems before you have them. Uh, well, if, you know, if we aren't solving future problems so we don't have them in the first place, in a world of transformational change, you and your customers are gonna be in trouble. Yeah. But by the way, if you can bring that to them, you can charge more and not be focused on hourly rates anymore. Yeah, and, that's, uh, and, and help them in a way that they'll never want to leave you, right? I mean, it's, right. and that's true for internal, the CFO types, as well as the CPA serving a client, right? Right, it's, so I want you to take your capabilities and your expertise with numbers, <clears throat> excuse me, and help me to make the invisible insight visible. That will give me some way to look forward not just say, good, we got the past covered and you did it well and it's accurate and thank you. But rather, I want to solve predictable problems with your help. And let's just think on a personal tax planning. Um, if, uh, let's say I'm your, your tax guy. Well, I'll see you once a year maybe. Uh, but if you're planning on buying a vacation home, you should be talking to me right away. If you're thinking of moving, you better be talking to me right away. You're changing your, uh, uh, your will uh, you should be talking to me right away. You see, you should be talking to me all the time. Yeah. Uh, and I should be charging you all the time <laughs> uh, rather than <laughs> once a year. But isn't this true? Isn't yeah. everything I said absolutely right? Absolutely. It's and, true. and I need consultative advice from an expert. That's what they want. That's what they want, even uh, rather than just someone who's helping me with getting my taxes. Now, of course, I'm not talking about the entire profession now. I'm focusing it on practitioner. You know, tax and the practitioner. But I'm just giving you an example of how a smaller operation, even if it's one person, yep. can actually grow their business quite substantially. Yeah, it's funny because we uh, even in we work with some of the large public company accounting finance teams, and when we had a roundtable of them, the biggest thing they said were, were actually two big things. They they talked about this idea that we're pressured for innovation to support business units, and we need our accounting and finance people to be able to. to to provide in, insight to see those invisible things and help those business units. And that was number one on their list. And then that tied on to the fact that we're busier than ever. So we, we've got to get them over that, you know, want to, to have to. Uh, but they're all saying the exact same thing. It's the first time in my 30 years in this profession that we've seen all segments, right? <clears throat> Small practice, big firms, big corporate, middle market, they're all wanting to do the same thing. We've got to look ahead farther, and we've got to make sense of it. And that's what this program helps them do. Well, in a, I was just uh, on an interview recently, and uh, uh, the interviewer knew that I had started six companies and you know, that I do strategic advising for the IBMs and the GEs and the you know, Joint Chiefs and so on. And they said, so what's your most, uh, most important software that you use? They were asking me, right? And I said, you know, it's going to surprise you, but it's my calendar. And the reason that's so important is if I don't get it in the calendar, it's not going to happen. I'll be too busy. So how do I get strategic personally? I manage what needs to be done in there. So if I need to spend work not being busy, because, you know, we're all busy. I'm not telling you don't be busy. Right. 
but I also now need to be strategic. Yeah. And that and it isn't going to happen. It's kind of like exercise. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I should do that. I must do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it in your calendar. Make an appointment. Yeah. Matter of fact, if you really want to make sure you're exercising, pay for a trainer. You know what? When you start paying for one, you're going to be there and you're going to show up, <laughs> uh, right? And so what I need to do and what you need to do, what we all need to do is manage our calendar so that we aren't just busy all the time, right. so that we're building in time. And by the way, we can't look at the future once and say, oh, I got it. Right. No, it's constantly, constantly. evolving. So right. this means, hey, I have to do this for me and for my business. Yep. I'm not immune to this. I have to do it too. Yeah. If I don't put it in there, I end up in trouble. I end up with problems that I could have avoided. It's if true. I wouldn't have spent some time looking ahead, yeah. well, here we are. Let's do it. So make an appointment with yourself, schedule that time to start learning these skills and applying them, and then get moving, right? That's, the, exactly. that's kind of a big and, piece and of advice. Again, that's part of the anticipatory organization is showing you exactly how to do it and what to do during that time. So you're maximizing your time. Spending, instead of a lot of time spinning your wheels, how to spend a small amount of time doing things that are highly productive and very focused. Because yep. see, we're good at that already. We know how to be focused. Yeah. We know how to be productive. We know how to use the tools real well that we know how to use. Right, so but that's giving them a new, new tool. Now. That's it, give them a new, new set of tools. Um, so the other thing I wanna make sure everyone understands, because we've, we've read this book in our office, we have a whole book club, and it's amazing what they've come away with this, Dan. So um, Flash Foresight, how to see the invisible and do the impossible, which is exactly what you uh, are teaching us, which is awesome. So I want to make that plug for that book. Yeah, thank you. You know, it's a required read by the IBMs and the Deloittes, and, and uh, there's a reason. They, they're actually getting results from this. As you know, since you've read it, it's got examples bringing it to life and, uh, you know, helping people see, oh, this is how you do it. Yeah. So I'm, that's great. And, that, so, and that's, a, that's great segue to our customer co-creation group. So when we first connected with you, that's what we said. We said, Dan, we want to bring this to CPAs, to our members in Maryland even, and we want to, but it's got to be customized, right? It's got to be relevant to the, to the finance, accounting, see big companies, little companies, small practice. So that's what we did, and, and we brought this group, I call it like the Noah's Ark, but we had everyone. We had small practices, we had public companies, nonprofits, even our young professionals group was involved in that, and they spent pretty much a day with you and your team working through capturing examples, and all those examples now have manifested in the anticipatory organization accounting and finance edition, right? Tell yeah, us a, matter, a little bit about that. As yeah. a matter of fact, uh, you know, we took a day where I was there with them, Yes. Uh, and then we spent another number of weeks where they were off working on it on their own, right. remember? So it wasn't just a day, it was no, more than we, that. Right. And, and we then they gave loops. us the material, and then we spent time integrating that into the system. Yep. So that again, we could make sure that it was focused and relevant. See, when we were building this, we wanted to make sure it took the, the smallest amount of time with the maximum amount of impact. Right. And that's why we have uh, short, single concept videos. We're talking three to four minutes, where there's a single concept, and then as an educator, we know that the sooner you apply the concept to your work, the more embedded it is in you, the more that learning now is part of your world. Exactly. If you learn something and don't use it, it's gone. Right. So we right away have these, what we call rapid application activities that get you to apply it to your work right away. And uh, that, you know, that's what brings it to life. Well, that's activities is where the learning take place. And that's what our customer co-creation group helped to create, right? Absolutely. So these are relevant examples out of the accounting finance profession. You know, it, it's, it's what we're really excited about is where, you know, we thought we were originally going to have you here as just a speaker, right? And it's like a one and done. But this way, I like to say we're going to give Dan in a box. I mean, we've got your, all your wisdom, knowledge, that 30 years of experience working with IBMs and Procter and & Gamble's and Deloitte and all those and making that accessible so that every one of our members, CPAs, accounting finance professionals, can get access to this and it's with them all the time so they can, one thing about when you talk, I always say you want to stop and like pause and rewind. But yeah. you're, you know, you're, yeah. you're going, barreling through stuff and you're like, wait a minute, I need that concept again. Now they can do that, right? So this is giving them a practical set of tools to literally learn these concepts, repeat them, learn them as many times as they want to be able to apply them to their real world 
and become anticipatory, right? And help yeah. them. Well, it's got me very excited in our relationship uh, and working on this because it's taking it to the profession. And for me, uh, you know, I can go in and work with executive teams of, of mid or large companies and, uh, you know, and, it, and that's uh, cost prohibitive for a smaller group or, you know, whatever. And I can't get to everyone, and right. I can't get to individuals that way, right. uh, other than reading a book. Right. And a book is great, and by the way, uh, most people uh, that have read that book have read it more than once, because there's a lot to mine in there. But again, how do you bring a book to life? How do you right. bring the concepts to life? How can I get to you when you're maybe a one-guy shop or you're a division that has got under budget constraints? Uh, and the answer is, well, I had to wait until technology got to where I could do that. Yeah. And technology is now there. I can get this out. And that's what we're really excited about. So we really appreciate uh, this ability to work with you and to bring you and your wisdom to every one of our members, every one of the accounting finance profession. Well, I, uh, on behalf of the profession, I thank you. Uh, and your team has been fantastic. At, I mean, they've been all out helping us to make it the best it could be for all of you. I think, you know, this is all, is there any final tips, anything else that you would say to CPAs, accounting finance professionals that? Yeah, this, there is indeed a tipping point right now. Uh, it's a unique time in all of human history. See, that's something we've got to understand. This is not normal. Yeah. This is a unique time. The world's fastest supercomputer two years ago was disassembled just a few months ago because it was already obsolete. Uh, I, I just was working with IBM recently. They've got their supercomputer Watson, yep. uh, which, that. by the way, is bad at math. What's it good at? Language. Very different. And so it learns over time. So let me just ask you a question. How long did it take Watson to read, understand, to be able to process and create from one million cookbooks? So, it, and by the way, I had a meal about a month ago in Toronto that no human would have ever made, that Watson, Watson created, created, putting combinations of things together no human would have ever put together, and it was delicious. Now, to, to read, understand, process, and make a meals from one million, one million cookbooks, cookbooks, how long did that take? Just, just take a quick guess. Just so, to, I'd say a month, to, I mean, two months. All like, right, here's the actual answer. Now, get this. One second. Whoa. One second. That's wild. By the way, that's today. Next year, what is it? Half a second. Yeah. That's the world we live in. That's crazy. That's, that's the world we live in. That's mind-boggling. Real-time accounting. Yeah. Real-time auditing, getting more real-time, more yep. powerful. You sit still. It's kind of like coasting uphill. At some point, gravity takes over. Right. <laughs> so what's, what's my final word here? This, this is indeed not crisis. This is indeed opportunity yeah. for us to create the future of this profession now, yep. not based on ifs and maybes and you know this, but based on what we know is happening. Future facts, separating what I call those hard trends that will happen from the soft trends that might happen so that we can have the certainty and the confidence to make bold moves. Yep. That's awesome. Dan, we're looking forward to this, and we'll, I'm sure we'll be having you back on more of these, but thank you very much for being here. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.